Welcome to episode five of Building a House Start to Finish, sponsored by Surfshark. And as promised, we show you our mistakes in these videos. Here was the first major one. I forgot about the curbless shower that the homeowner wanted. She had called and changed it. So, you know, we're all human. We all make mistakes. We forget things. You know, I told them it's no big deal. I mean, most guys will forget maybe their tape measure or maybe forget some lumber. But no, not our Perkins boy. He forgot to do the whole entire shower. First, we removed three inches of gravel so that the curbless shower could recess in below the rest of the slab. Next, we ripped up some material to make the form boards. And here's a good tip for cutting stakes. I've seen a lot of people trying to cut the point on the stake from this direction. And you can see that the guard on this saw, if you're coming in from this shallow angle, just doesn't let you do it easy. So you have to pull the guard back and the board wants to walk around. So what I always do is cut from this direction from the square end of the board to cut the point from both ways because it engages the guard correctly and it's a lot faster and easier. We assembled the form with some T25 deck screws, three inch, and these are great for doing all kinds of things that you need to remove later. We installed the stakes and pulled the form board up flush with the top of the rest of the slab. And then we played a little bit of construction twister to get the other side fastened level. And last we drilled through the block with a masonry bit to run a few screws into the end of these form boards. Zip tape. I'm not sponsored by zip tape in any way, but let me tell you, this stuff is good for pretty much anything. I always have a roll in my truck. After cutting all of the stakes flush, I then bent some steel that would tie the steel from the rest of the slab into this new lower portion of the slab under the shower. That way it's all one solid piece. Okay, now we're ready for the slab, I think. Okay, it's finally slab day. We're headed to the job. It's about seven in the morning. Got my coffee. I just called Jamie to remind him to bring the anchor bolts. That's a big mistake if you get your concrete board. You don't have the anchor bolts to put in to hold the house down to the foundation. So we got that coming and hopefully it's not gonna rain. That'd be the major disaster that could happen today is if it started pouring rain on our finished slab, it's gonna be the finished floor. So we've checked the weather. It's supposed to be a good day. Here we go. Got my man Chase with me today. He's gonna help me out. Got him some safety glasses. So we're getting concrete in your eyeballs. Peace. And I don't care how many houses you've built in your life, concrete day is stressful. Everything has to be ready. The grade stakes, the grade poles, all of your machinery has to be tested, cleaned, and sitting there ready to go because concrete will not stop drying even if you're not ready to finish it. Today we used a concrete pumper to place the concrete because you can place it a lot more accurately than dumping it straight out of the truck onto the ground. This pumper is controlled by a remote control. It's awesome. And we had the best guys on the job, Terry Fisher and his crew and Allison Concrete Pumping. And finally, it was more than just me and Florida Boy on the job. Mr. Jason, what's your advice on pouring concrete? Um, I would say go to college. <laughs> For a concrete slab, you have to break it down into manageable size sections. Here's our first section, which is about 10 feet wide. The usual range is 8 to 12 feet, from my experience. This gives you a width that a nice straight screed board can actually reach across. In this shot, Terry is hand screeding because of all the pipes. He's screeding between two of the grade poles that I showed in the first part of the video. These poles are taken out of the concrete before it dries and the little indentions are just filled in. You make it up here? Let's take a moment to thank our sponsor for this video, Surfshark. Surfshark lets you shield your online presence by encrypting your personal information and protects you from targeted ads. You know, like when the one thing you just searched on your browser pops up in your Facebook feed five minutes later, super creepy. You can even avoid price discrimination on plane tickets and other accommodations. 
Surfshark also allows you to watch blocked Netflix content from other countries, like I can watch The Hobbit in the USA. They offer a 30-day money-back guarantee and is very affordable, especially if you use the promo code in the description, which gets you 85% off plus an extra three months free, which is the best price on the market. After screening, the next step in the process of finishing this concrete slab is to run a bull float across the surface. This step of the process does several things, including embedding the larger aggregate in the concrete, smoothing the surface of the concrete, and also removing high and low spots. The attack angle of the bull float head is adjustable just by twisting the pole. This allows you to float in both directions without digging in. Hey Dad, I'm really hungry. But it's 9.30 in the morning. Oh. Okay. It's not lunchtime yet? I guess not. <laughs> Once Terry had cleared all the pipes, he was able to use his power screed, which uses a weed eater engine to vibrate this aluminum pole and screed the concrete much more easily, and it helps embed the aggregate as well. <laughs> Next, Harlow and I went around and set all the anchor bolts that would hold down the exterior walls to this foundation. These are eight inch long by half inch galvanized bolts. And you have to remember to let them stick up about two inches so they'll go through an inch and a half plate and still have room for the nut to catch on the threads on top. We put them about four feet on center on this project and put one at the end of each of our plates as well. Uh, lunchtime yet? Yeah, I'm pretty hungry. Hi, yeah, bub. Okay, we did decide to go with the fiber reinforced concrete because they had this little teeny kind of fiber you could get in that wouldn't really mess up our uh, stained concrete. You can see one right on the end of my finger there. They're teeny tiny, but they actually add a lot of strength. Uh, and that's in addition to the steel we put in here. Pretty cool. After we completed the main parts of the slab, we moved on to the patios. And these will get a light broom finish, as we'll show you in a second. This will help them to be a lot less slippery when wet. Yeah, let's do it. Go ahead. You're loud. Your dad said it was cool. Go ahead. I don't I see think your, I will. You put your footprint right in, too. No, no. <laughs> I'm not doing it first. <laughs> oh, you don't want to do a full body imprint? No. Yeah, come on, Superman. I prefer not to. While we were waiting for the concrete to set up enough for the power trowel, we discussed where to put the control joints in this slab. That, well, there is a a control joint is simply you know, a line cut into the slab right to weaken it in one spot, and hopefully the concrete will crack there in a straight line. For starting your power trowel, it's a good rule of thumb to wait until your footprint sinks no more than a quarter inch. If you get on it with the trowel too early before the bleed water is off, it could actually work the water back under the slab and cause delamination of the slab later. This is the first of several passes with this power trowel to slick this slab out. It's done at low speed with the blades at a shallow angle. And here's a look at the patio finish. It's got the broom finish, as I mentioned. It's literally finished with a broom, just like he's doing. And this isn't as easy as it looks, though. He's really good at it, and that's why I hired him to do it instead of me doing it. As they were finishing these patios, something caught my eye. Seems someone had run over our form board between us putting it in and pouring the concrete. It was way crooked. Luckily, we were able to use my truck and some ratchet straps to pull the form board back straight. Then we used some excess concrete to fill in the void like it never happened. As the day went by, the concrete cured and got harder. Terry was able to get out and turn the power trial up to get a nice slick finish. He uses these water bottles with a tiny hole cut in the lid to add water where he needs, and this is really a several hour process going back and forth between the power trowel and using a hand trowel around the edges to get everything smoothed up just right. With this slab completed and dried, it was time to turn it over to quality control, which in this case is my son and a rip stick. Let's see how it does. See these anchor bolts? They will bite you, don't get near them. Okay. After a good 30 minute session, it was determined that this slab was okay. 
Thanks for watching our video today. Remember to subscribe, like, and click the bell so you get our future videos. And also check out the description where I give a cost breakdown of the materials for this project up to this point. See ya.